Republicans are now on day two of their latest sustained round of bad faith attacks against Democratic Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. This time it's for expressing the personal meaning she derives from her ancestors' land in what is now Israel, being used to create a safe haven for Jews after the horrors of the Holocaust. That sentiment has been twisted in, twisted in truly odious ways from an accusation of anti-Semitism by the Republican National Committee Chair Ronna, Ronna McDaniel to absolutely vile remarks from Wyoming Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney suggesting that Tlaib was trying to delegitimize Israel but among Tlaib's supporters is one of her most stalwart defenders, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. Omar and Tlaib are the only two Muslim American women in Congress, and they have consistently had each other's backs as they have each endured a series of attacks. Today, Congresswoman Omar, along with her Jewish colleague, Congresswoman Jan Jakowski of Illinois, wrote an op-ed calling for building alliances between the members of the Muslim and Jewish faiths and for an end to bigotry. And Democratic Congresswoman Ilhan Omar of Minnesota is here with me now. Um, Congresswoman, I want to talk about your op-ed, but first I want to ask how you, given the experience you've had uh, in the sort of center of firestorms, uh, how you are interpreting what is happening right now with respect to uh, your colleague Rashida Tlaib's comments. Uh, hi, Chris. Uh, it's really good to be here with you. You know, I, I tell my sister uh, Rashida Tlaib that her and I have um, the strength to endure any of the mischaracterization or efforts to distort um, and, and vilify uh, and mischaracterize our, our message. Uh, and I think um, we are seeing what happens when uh, people see um, these kind of attacks for what they are. Um, it is designed to uh, silence, sideline, um, and sort of almost eliminate um, public, public voice of Muslims from the public discourse. And so uh, I'm really excited that we have an opportunity to build um, alliances and, and push back and, and fight uh, this, this attempt to marginalize our, our community's voice. You know, you, you had this op-ed with Jan Joukowsky today talking about sort of the sort of shared interests of, of Jews and Muslims and sort of fighting bigotry and white nationalism and white nationalist violence. And I wonder what your experience has been, because obviously there have been, I think there's some folks who have come after you in bad faith, but there are some who are, were, were offended in good faith by things that you said or tweeted about allegiance to Israel or a tweet about it all about the Benjamins vis-a-vis -vis money. And there are folks who are consider themselves progressives or liberals or Jews who are offended and are skeptical, um, maybe about where you're coming from. What, what have you learned and what do you say to them as you seek to try to build this alliance? I mean, the one thing that Jen and I realized was that when you see something wrong, that you have um, to use your, your influence and your voice uh, to speak out against it. And what we have noticed is that there is um, a threat. Our communities are being terrorized, terrorized by white supremacy. We, we've seen uh, the attacks on synagogues. We've seen the, the linkage that they have um, to people who seek to terrorize mosques. Um, we notice uh, that there is uh, people on um, the right wing who are fueling that hate. Um, their message is being used to fuel this sort of violence against both of um, our communities because of our faith. Uh, and it is time for us to make sure that we don't allow for them to use uh, any misunderstanding there might be uh, to divide us, uh, that we collectively work together against the collective hate um, that is coming from uh, the right wing um, and, 